Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of yet another very unusual star system with a strange planet around it. Today we'll talk about the system known as GJ3512 and its unusually large exoplanet. Welcome to What The Math. In the last few decades, specifically since 1995, we've discovered quite a lot of different exoplanets. There's roughly around um, 4,000, actually more than 4,000 confirmed planets already, and it's very likely that within the next year we'll get even more. Mostly because the so-called Planet Hunter TESS, this is the telescope that's currently used to hunt for all of these exoplanets, has been so proactive and very efficient at catching them. And so it just so happens that very recently we've discovered yet another unusual exoplanet in the system of GJ or Gliese 3512. This system that you see on the screen is uh, unusual for a different reason. It's actually unusual because we can't seem to explain how it can possess such an extremely massive planet. And the main reason why this planet is so unusual is actually because it's way, way more massive than it should be. So let me explain to you first of all how we've discovered it and why its mass is so unusual. Here is actually a recreation of the system in Universe Sandbox, and here if we just basically look at the star, and more specifically at its speed around the night skies, we'll notice that it has a very slight sort of change here. This change in velocity is currently caused by a random planet I placed in the habitable zone of the system, and this planet is actually Earth. And so if Earth was in the habitable zone of the star, this is what we would see when looking at the actual light of this star. So here it looks like the planet increases its velocity by about 1.8 meters per second every two weeks or so. But when looking at the star, this is not what the scientists saw. What they saw was this. The pattern of velocity was very similar to what you're seeing here, where it was kind of strangely shaped and the maximum velocity of the star increased by about 180 to maybe even 200 meters per second. And this suggested that something really massive was orbiting it in a somewhat unusual orbit. Now, if I were to zoom out here just to show you what's happening, you will notice that this system has a planet with a very unusual eccentric orbit. And this is the planet here. Now, the Earth I placed previously doesn't actually exist in the system, although we do think there might be another planet here because of the observational anomalies that were detected. But for now, it's not confirmed. This planet, however, is confirmed. And it seems to be an extremely large gas giant-like object. But here's the problem. Unlike Jupiter and unlike Saturn, this object cannot possibly be created around these star systems because the a star itself is actually not very large. This star here only has about 12% the mass of our own sun, and its luminosity is about 500 times less. In other words, it's 500 times less bright than our sun. And this suggests that there's just not enough mass in the whole system to create these unusually large objects. It might have smaller planets, and we've discovered many such planets, like for example in the TRAPPIST-1 system, but all of those planets are more terrestrial in size. The planet that was just discovered is approximately half the mass of Jupiter, and it suggests to us that this is basically a huge anomaly. This is just kind of currently impossible to explain. And for this reason, the scientists behind the paper that you can find in the description below propose that this exoplanet is probably not really an exoplanet, but more of a brown dwarf star-like um, object. In other words, it's an object that was supposed to become a star, but just didn't get enough mass to become a star. So technically, what we're looking at in this system is a kind of a binary star, where one object is a very small uh, in mass star, that's a red dwarf, and the other object is just a failed star. It's a star that just never really achieved its star status by getting enough mass. And uh, one of the main differences between basically a star and a planet is in the way that these objects form. This is why today brown dwarfs um, actually have their own status, because technically they were formed similar to stars and not planets. Now when it comes to planets, for example, all of the planets we know of and all of the planets in our own solar system formed in a very similar way. They started as very tiny chunks uh, of matter, slowly became larger and larger and larger, and eventually through various collisions became planets that we know today. 
This is the modern uh, understanding of planetary formation, and this is how we technically define planets. However, some objects, even though there might be in a star system, formed very similar to stars. They formed when the gas cloud from which stars are made suddenly has a little point in the middle where things start collapsing. But in some cases, there are several of such points, and this is how a lot of these binary stars are formed, where gas collapses in several points, thus creating stars that start orbiting around one another. Now, if you'd like to watch the simulation uh, in full, it's available under the University of Leicester webpage, and this was produced by this wonderful person right here, Matthew Bates, who has a lot more simulations on his website. And so the discovery of this brown dwarf actually creates quite a lot of mysteries. So the scientists behind this paper do believe that it was created very similar to a star through the so-called gas collapse model, but at the same time, its mass is very, very small. Before the discovery of um, this object, the smallest mass for a brown dwarf was around 12 masses of Jupiter. But we also believe that there are actual planets, not brown dwarfs, that are even more massive than that. So specifically, there are planets we've discovered out there that have a much larger mass, roughly around 30 masses of Jupiter, compared to the object we've just found. So this really creates a kind of a mystery, because it seems that there are brown dwarfs that are a lot less massive than the biggest planets we've found, yet there are planets out there that are not brown dwarfs. And all of this comes down to the way that they were made. So even though this object is more massive, it was created similar to a planet, through the um, accretion of various smaller particles. However, this brown dwarf is extremely small, but was created similar to a star. And this does create a question, of course, of whether these objects are fundamentally different. If this is technically a star-like object, it probably has very similar to a star composition on the inside and might even have very different structure to a typical planet. And this is something that we will definitely need to investigate in the future, because right now we don't really know what really makes them different. And by the way, this is how this object compares to Jupiter. Jupiter is right here, and it's about uh, twice as massive, yet size-wise they're not really that different, simply because of the actual density. But we of course don't really know if the composition is different, because this is not something we can discover right now. But what makes this system very unusual is of course the uh, similarities of the star to the actual planet. So here their composition is probably extremely similar, and the difference in their mass is also not that dramatic. So um, this object is only about 250 or so masses of the actual planet, kind of making this more of a binary system than a star system with various planets. And it would be really interesting to find out if there are actually other similar planets here, because right now um, the scientists behind this paper believe that there might be another gas giant hiding somewhere. And the reason they think so is because of the orbit we're observing here. This orbit is actually very eccentric, it's very oval shaped. This can only be uh, achieved through some sort of a gravitational interaction with another object. In other words, there might have been something else really massive here that created this unusual shape. Possibly some other gas giant somewhere on the outskirts that got kicked out of the system through the interaction with the much larger planet currently known as GJ3512b. Now we don't really know if this third planet exists just yet, but I'm sure in the next few years we'll discover because this system will probably now be very thoroughly studied, especially because it's not that far away from us. It's actually even closer than the TRAPPIST-1 system, the distance here is only about 31 light years away from us, and because of the discovery of this unusual planet, it will probably be in the various studies in the next few years. But I guess the more interesting discovery here is that this unusual object is technically the uh, extreme case of a failed star. You wouldn't really call it a planet, even though it orbits a star, simply because of its formation history. But in some of the future studies, I'm sure we'll discover more secrets about this uh, system, and I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then though, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper in the description below. Thank you for watching, and subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it actually does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.